Thank you, Brian, for joining us today at Budwell High School as our uh, guest speaker for the graduation of 2015. We are very excited to host you and have a few questions which uh, have been requested by some graduates and some staff. Uh, so would you mind talking about your high school experience? What do you remember? Yeah, I mean, so my, you know, my high school experience was very unique. I, I ended up skipping a bunch of grades, so I went technically to only one year of official high school with U Hill. Um, and then after that, I did two years at this program called the University Transition Program, which was kind of like a joint thing between UBC and the, the school board. Um, so technically, I did three years of high school, um, and the first year was with 500 kids, and the second year and the third year was with 40 kids. So it was a totally different experience. But I, I think it was very intense. It was probably, in many cases, harder than university, if I recall, because we crammed, I think, almost seven grade 12 subjects in the one year, I remember. That was my second year, my last year of high school. Um, and we did seven provincials. So it was a little bit uh, back when provincials were still a thing. Uh, but it was, uh, it was a very uh, intense education uh, regimen. Was it a breeze going into university? Yeah, it was between university and that, it was almost like a piece of cake. So I think it was uh, it was good to train me early. And that's why they called it the University Transition Program, because it was early preparation for early entrance into university. Awesome. Yeah. What's your uh, most memorable high school experience uh, to date? I'll be honest, high school for me was Very kind of put into a, a drawer. Not because it was painful experiences, but more because it was literally a stepping stone for me. It wasn't really that much of a full experience. All I do know is that I never got bullied, never got shoved into a locker. I think in many cases my intelligence became like a, a shield, which I think was, was helpful, or at least perceived intelligence, I'm not actually that smart. Um, and then uh, part of that was, uh, you know, being able to, I think it was just being able to feel like you were learning fast and getting to a point where you could be ready for university. It's always, university was like the end goal for a lot of uh, the, the, the kids that I was with. Mm -hmm. and, naturally having immigrant parents, it is a very important goal for, yeah, for many of us. For sure. Did you always want to go and study at UBC? I didn't really care. I mean, honestly, I honestly just wanted to get into university, period. So just getting into university was, was already enough, and it was exciting. And UBC was, uh, happened to be one of the ones that my parents really liked, so I guess everybody won. In fact, it was the only university that I applied to because being uh, 14 at the time, you, there was only you know, UBC, which would really accept us because it was their program, so it kind of made sense that way. Excellent, excellent. Uh, and you studied business. Uh, mm -hmm. Is that all? Is it something you, you always wanted to do? Or it's something an advice they gave you? It was really the parents who recommended you to study business. I um, chose business because out of all the subjects I, I learned in high school, um, I figured that business would be the one where I'd learn the most new stuff and that I would, I would hate the least um, because, you know, when I thought about sciences and, and, and math, and I wasn't really that good at those things and I was like, all right, so business, I never really got to learn that in high school because you don't really learn any business yeah. classes in high school, so I was like, oh, this could be interesting. So I dove in head first and never looked back and I really, really enjoyed it. I ended up doing marketing and I actually ended up doing a minor in, in political science, so completely unrelated to business. Um, and that helped me kind of diversify my knowledge. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, what was your memorable class uh, when, you was at, when you were at university? Um, there were a couple actually, and one that you would never expect. Um, it was uh, Poly 333, so it was a, a senior credits level class for political science. It was designed to help me complete my credit requirement from a minor. But I ended up taking that class by mistake because there was like, it's a filler for like multiple classes that could potentially fill that subject when the term actually started. And it turned out the first day I walked in, it was like, Welcome to Forest Politics. And I was like, uh, I didn't really sign up for Forest Politics, and I didn't really find it, it, just from the title, like that sounds so boring. Yeah. Um, but then it turned out to be one of the most valuable classes that I ever took because okay. it taught me a lot in negotiation because the whole class was about how forests and you know the indigenous people and the government and the co the corporations that want to mine it for its resources were negotiating with each other to, 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 for ownership uh, and, and land rights and things like that. Um, so I just learned so much from that. And so it, had, it was just so, like, so, so the most like, unexpected class became one of the most interesting. Um, and the second most uh, memorable class was uh, um, uh, this uh, consumer behavior class that I took. Um, and it really gave me the foundation of knowledge that I used to even start the company uh, that I started today, which is very focused on 
uh, psychology and how consumers react um, right. based on how advertisers engage. So the fundamental principles of that have been baked into what we built out at Keep. Yeah, absolutely. Um, did you always, did you feel uh, while you were at university that entrepreneurship was something that you will do for a living or to become an entrepreneur? Quite honestly, no. I just wanted a job. I wanted to be a corporate lawyer when I first entered into college and then realized that, that wasn't going to happen um, and uh, was going to be happy with an accounting or a bank or more importantly like a, a brand management job was kind of like the, the, uh, the, goal, the yeah. goal. But um, entrepreneurship is not really a thing that I just chose. I actually ended up going down to Silicon Valley to work for another company and then I got laid off six months into the job. So I was unemployed, which is what kind of forced me into making my own job and I happened to be unemployed during what would be uh, the early stages of the most recent boom you see in Silicon Valley so it was 2010 and it was still a couple of years after the financial crisis even now we haven't really fully recovered in some places so it was uh, an interesting time uh, and it all happened to be uh, right around the time that a lot of venture capitalists were looking into mobile uh, products to early invest into right. and that's how we ended up making the early investment. Ah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you do you feel uh, you're obviously very successful uh, and, and uh, uh, yourself uh, uh, you could you're motivated I think your parents are very proud of you as well um, but what what really drives you what's your what, what's your biggest motivator in life there's no single motivator um, I think life in general is enough of a motivator I think there's so many things that I want to learn um, and I think having a vehicle to help me do that is exciting. Um, but there's no, I think I'm too young to even know what I want to, if you think about it. It's like at 23, you're not supposed to. It's just so lucky that I happened to find something that, that I didn't hate and happened to be something that really matched up to, to how I would express my skills, right? So, um, you know, I think my skill set was a combination of design and a bit of marketing and business and, um, and that became the confluence of skills that helped uh, make this company work, work out, right? So I think it's, it's about, Right timing, and then also the fact that I just happen to really enjoy learning, and so that's yeah. a big, big piece of it. Absolutely. How do you learn? A lot of it's reading. A lot of it's uh, traveling and meeting new people, new cultures. I love experiencing things that are essentially the equivalent of what you know back home, but in the version of how the culture decided to create it somewhere else in the, in the world. And I know it kind of sounds cliche, but I feel like I'm like a, a citizen of the world, you know, and you're yeah. like trying to learn and grow and adapt that way. And I feel like. You know, the arts is a great way to get that taste of culture when you're back home in museums right. and things like that, but even better is just to be there. So that's cool. one of my main goals. So where is the favorite place to travel? Every place I go to, I have a favorite part of it, right? Yeah. So there's no like one place that's my top. It's literally every place I, I know where to go for my favorite stuff. Yeah. So the, I guess what, what, what's on the top of your mind, uh, the most recent experience? Well, right now it's because I'm going to be all over Asia next week, so I'm doing Kuala Lumpur, Jakarta, Singapore, and Shanghai, all in one week. Um, and I haven't been back to Southeast Asia for two years, so I'm very excited to go back. Would you have some time to enjoy yourself as well? I think or? I should. Every evening after 10 p.m., yeah. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's that's the what? Yeah. 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 Well, one other question. Um, thinking back, uh, obviously you have some excellent mentors in your life. What's the, the best advice you've ever received? Well, there's different advice for different parts of your life, right? And the one that is most applicable recently was a one that I actually written, re wrote, recently wrote a, uh, an article about. And it was, um, if you ask for money, you get advice. If you ask for advice, you get money. And I think it's very tied to the notion of constantly learning, bringing people in so that they can help you grow rather than just give you money. And uh, you can never really go to someone straight up and ask for money all the time. It doesn't mm -hmm. work that way. It's how do you uh, kind of bring them into building value with you. And uh, that's been a model that has helped me constantly for the past four years in this company that's been around. Excellent. Um, I think one of the questions that uh, Andrew has, uh, someone who is involved with the community of our students and technology at the school, um, what uh, advice could you, could you give uh, to students uh, graduating from high school, going to university, um, desiring or willing to, to, to find themselves in the tech industry, whether it's in Vancouver or in the Silicon Valley? Yeah, I'm going to cover some of that stuff in my, my, my talk today, but I think ultimately 
you need to realize that what you're learning right now, what you're using right now, is not going to be relevant in a few years, right? And so constantly being on top of where things are going and really immersing yourself in that tech. Like, you almost can't be the spectator at all. You can't analyze. You can't, you know, observe. You have to be. So being young, though, gives you, gives you this opportunity to be the true sort of digital native. And that's what makes you already um, ahead of the pack. So people kind of forget when you're young and you're using all these things, most people who are already in the workforce for a few years go, wait, how, how did you figure this out? How did, because I just use it with my friends. It's very natural. So you, yeah. you understand how that plays out. So that's something that you should leverage as your strength. I think the other thing is realize that everything your parents told you about what you can do in your career is probably the most limiting advice you'll get. It's great to know that it exists. I was like, oh, this is the Silicon Valley world. It's like there's career paths that I had never known actually existed. Um, and that's something that you should keep an eye out and actually try to experience. So. Absolutely, absolutely. Andrew, any questions? Um, any? Edward Snowden, hero or villain? I don't know. I mean, the guys, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm neutral on the guy. I mean, he's, <laughs> he's a hero to me. Yeah, he's a hero to <laughs> uh, How can you use technology to do good? Like, I think every technology has the opportunity to do good. It's just choosing. Okay. Yeah. Right? I mean, so that you choose if you want to use it for good or not, right? And if you use it for evil, then did that there you go, right? And that's how what happens. I think it's every single tech I've seen. If you pick a path that's pure uh -huh. and you're doing it for the betterment of of people's lives, then you have a noble cause behind it, and you could potentially make a lot of money. And then you can also make a lot of money doing it on the other side, right? Yeah. So it's really about the choices you make and how you guide your staff. Yeah. And who are some of your heroes in like the tech world? I don't really have any idols or heroes, um, mainly because I don't really want to idolize them or mm -hmm. put them on the pedestal. I, I want to see the things that they've done that I can apply to my situation that could help me become successful. I think too often people look at someone who's like a Richard Branson and like an Elon Musk and go, oh my god, I want to be a billionaire. And it doesn't happen that way. Um, just because they did it their way and their path doesn't mean that it's going to be working for you. So that's some of the things that I share with people as well. Very true. Mm -hmm. I never thought I would be working in high school while I was uh, studying Dude, at the university. pick your own path, man. It's like, there's, that's the thing that like, people don't realize. It's like, the circumstances that led to their success are never the same for you, right? So you need to figure out the principles that they followed that helped them persevere through challenges and you know, I mean, Elon Musk almost went bankrupt and literally spent all $120 million of his fortune from the PayPal sale into building Tesla uh, and SpaceX and was pretty much near bankruptcy. So, I mean, there's these things that you don't hear. Yeah. And then you hear, oh, you know, he's like, you know, was, you know, married to a model and, you know, now worth like $3 billion, whatever, like that, that you don't, you know, that, yeah. that's what the, that's the result. But failure is okay. But it's not yeah. even failure, it's like the opportunity to learn. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. A failure is yeah. an opportunity to learn. Exactly. But what's most impressive about Elon Musk is not his bank balance, it's the fact that he's picked like the th three of the most pressing problems on this planet and made a business out of the solution. It's like, it's incredible. Yeah. Like, <laughs> um, and, and what are your thoughts on the Vancouver tech industry? The what? I think the tech industry here is growing um, very quickly. And I think you only need like one big success story, like a Hootsuite, to like fund a, a crew of millionaires to kind of help fund everything else. So I think you give it a few years and you'll start to see this, the fruits of that labor come out. Because once they have some type of an exit, at least, uh, I'd say, 20 people will come out, 30 people will come out of there with a lot of money that will then invest um, in other startups. Yeah. And you only need really to invest 50, 60, 100K, 200K, yeah. and yeah. you know, you'll birth other successful startups. Are you planning to move back to Vancouver one day? I will be a, a resident of many cities, let's say that. Good. Yeah, so I, I really enjoy Vancouver for many reasons. Um, my parents are still here, a lot of friends are still here. Um, but I just, I've seen enough to realize that I don't need to be in one yeah. place forever. Yeah. And you can always come back to Vancouver. Oh yeah, it's so easy, step on a plane. Yeah, that is yeah, true. Exactly. A couple hours away, yeah, yeah, that's, that's everything is relative. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Good, let's go back, socialize a little yeah, bit. Sure. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Thanks mm -hmm. very much. Thank you.